Let's talk about ego again. I want to talk to you about something that I've been reflecting upon for a while now, which is why do people get stuck in first? And I will give you an image today, but this is an expression that we kind of use a lot. Right? I'm stuck in first. And perhaps we don't question exactly why that image makes sense to us. So I'm going to try to expand on that. First of all, let's define what that emotion feels like in practical terms. If you're someone uh, like me, who's somewhat creative or entrepreneurial or ambitious, and ambition is a driving force that a lot of us feel um, attracted towards nowadays, uh, mainly because there's so much more opportunity that it kind of feels like you need to be ambitious to be true to yourself and be true to uh, progress, really. But many of us have ideas and we develop them and then we find ourselves stuck. Not stuck in starting the idea, but stuck in that in the in the going from one to two. So many of us are capable, although difficult that is, of going from zero to one. But then burnout uh, kicks in. We we feel tired. We feel like we've been grinding um, pointlessly. We feel like there's really not much happening past that zero to one transition. How do you go from one to two? Or from 1 to 10 or 1 to 100 which is what you want when you go from 0 to 1 you want to see that exponential effect supporting you and propelling you forward when it comes to your ambitions and your goals and just general uh, life decisions you want to see a continual improvement behind all your decisions but then we get stuck. And the big question here is, why do we get stuck? And how can we unstuck ourselves? I would argue that we get stuck in first because we are trying to avoid going into second. And for many of us, we don't even know that our gearbox has a second. And then something else happens. We are in this situation where we are trying to go on a journey that requires you to go on a motorway you're ambitious you don't, you don't just want to take you know countryside roads some of us do and there's nothing wrong with that but this is for those of you who like me want to take the motorway you want to go faster you want to go farther you want to make sure that you don't waste time you value your time and outcome great so that's the motorway that's why we cre we've created those roads. Those are fast roads that connect A to B in, in shorter distances and that have better um, conditions that allow for faster traveling. Humankind is very much um, always available to explore the, the faster way to do things. The problem is many of us have never been taught or have learned um, how to travel at that speed. So we go onto the motorway and we, we are in first and then we see all these cars driving by, cruising by. All these great cars, BMWs, Mercedes, Ferraris, Lamborghinis and they all go in, you know, 5th, 6th, 7th. And you're there in first, revving your engine as much as you can. And obviously your engine is about to collapse. And they're just cruising along. And then you realize, I'm stuck in first. And it's not that you can't go into second, third, fourth. You can. The issue is that you don't know how. No one has taught you how to control the gearbox. And what is the gearbox in real life terms? Knowledge. If you're trying to partake on a journey that, that is ambitious, that is difficult, that is going to be grueling and challenging, one of the things that you will struggle to do, if not challenge to do so, is to realize and 
accept humbly that you don't know enough to take on that journey. You haven't been given the map. You don't know how to go into second. You don't know what, what that requires from you. And you just do it. And that's when ego kicks in. Because your ego will convince you that your value is enough for you to take on that journey. And although your value is enough for you to start that journey, your value is enough for you to turn on the, the engine. And that's going to come from a place of will and, and desire and ambition, but it's not a very sustainable approach to an ambitious journey. Eventually, you will need to know how to pace yourself. You will need to know how to make decisions that take you farther. You'll need to know how to avoid potholes. You'll need to know how to avoid running out of gas. And that's learning how to use the gearbox too, because that's gonna protect yourself, your energy. And ultimately that's the outcome. So nowadays, we all see on social media, everyone is an entrepreneur, everyone is an influencer, everyone is the next, you know, Mark Cuban and Jeff Bezos. But seldomly you're told exactly how you go from zero to one and one to two. You need to seek that, that advice much more deeply. You probably will need to seek advice from people directly, but also you'll need to seek advice from different fields of knowledge. For me, the biggest awakening when it came to how do I manage my ambition or at least the relationship between my ambition and the fact that I do want to achieve results and I don't just want to be starting the, uh, the engine every day from scratch or revving my engine to, to, to exhaustion. The reality is that I had to study philosophy. I had to study biology. I had to study psychology. I had to study business, economics finance. I had to understand at least, um, you know, the surface level knowledge or information. I had to understand the surface level information behind outlining a business plan, creating a business model, understanding upselling, cross-selling, diagonal growth, vertical, horizontal, all of that. It, it, it has to make sense to you. Otherwise, you will find yourself struggling to pull through all the questions that will come, that it will, they will hit you in the face. And if you're revving the engine and you get stuck in first and you're already struggling to move forward, the reality is that one pothole and you're done. And then you're just by the side of the road flat tires, burnt out engine, looking at Ferraris driving by you. What's the difference? The person driving the Ferrari understood that they couldn't do that. A, in first. B, using a vehicle that is just not sturdy enough. So they made the investment. They invested in themselves. They got a, a, a vehicle, which in this case, again, in practical terms, is knowledge information, experience. Experience is just the result of you applying knowledge time and time again and reaching conclusions, realizing what works, what doesn't work. But what you need to really focus on is avoid the ego, which translates into a stubbornness, a, 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 a belief in yourself that is not grounded in reality, but merely grounded in the fact that you want to prove yourself right and others wrong. Maybe you have a chip on your shoulder. Don't we all? Entrepreneurs are very much like this, right? We have an itch that we, we need to scratch, but sometimes that itch is someone. Even if it's not someone who's in your life right now, that's someone who's created that hang up, that, that need for revenge. You have to find yourself. You have to stop battling ghosts and predicating your goals and ambitions uh, on on th that need to to be correct and instead just understand that if what I want to achieve is helpful for others and myself 
then that should be enough for me to pursue that goal. And simultaneously, I will have to be humble enough to stay the course, learn um, whatever it takes to actually succeed, understand your blind spots and, and gaps in, 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 in your game, and just, you know, fix that. Because if what's driving you is service of others, then why not? Why not fix those issues? No one's born all knowing. We all struggle with this stuff. But I struggled a lot with my ego getting in the way because I wanted to believe that if I just persevere, if I, ju if I just push through, the answer will re reveal itself. And obviously it didn't. I, I learned a lot about what not to do, but did I learn anything about what to do? Huh? At times, you know, by by using a bit of an antidote formula, but but also, and 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 the the sad reality is this: when you're proven wrong time and time again, and you're being driven by ego, that's a really bad combination because you're already very close to burning out. That's Problem number one. Problem number two is that your self-esteem now is at, at, at an all-time low. Because your ego is being wounded time and time again. And you're not being driven by something bigger than yourself. Which then translates into inner struggle. So ask yourself, what is it that you don't know? What is it that you need to know in order to succeed at this, this journey that you want to take on? Make sure that you understand the route. Make sure that you uh, anticipate potholes. And make sure that you know exactly how to work the gearbox. And make sure that you know how to work the gearbox. Make sure that you know what kind of vehicle is required for the journey you're about to take on. Don't try to be a martyr if you're an ambitious person. That's your ego trying to self-sabotage. So today, check in on yourself. Ask yourself, what is it that I don't know? That I need to, you know, get some, uh, some knowledge on and be a beginner again. All there is to this is winning. If you do the right thing at the right time and you don't try to just stubbornly push through uh, obvious issues and obstacles without actually trying to understand if there's a better route to get to the, the other side. If you manage to not do that, you will avoid a lot of pain, you will enjoy the fruits of your success much more quickly, and it will become much more sustainable over time. Good luck. <laughs>